Uh, knee replacement surgery is very common now, and it means that many different types of people come forward for consideration of knee replacement. Uh, there are certain challenging situations for a surgeon and for a patient, um, and they would be uh, different for different people in different circumstances. Uh, the majority of knee replacements are straightforward and successful, uh, but there can be situations where knee replacements become complicated. For example, if somebody has had previous knee surgery, uh, where there is scarring or some awkward deformity of the knee, it can be difficult to correct all of those elements. If patients have a weakness prior to surgery, and that can't be overcome, so if they have a muscular disease or some other problem, uh, doing a knee replacement won't necessarily restore good function to the leg. So you have to factor in what a, like a muscle weakness or some other neurological condition um, might cause for, you know, for the knee to be a problem. Um, there are other situations where you've got restricted movement of the knee uh, prior to surgery, and it's very hard to recover good function in the joint when the knee is stiff before you operate. Um, for the obese patients, it can also be quite challenging. Um, certainly to get a good result there, you need everything in your favor, and that's quite a difficult thing. Um, but there are many techniques that surgeons employ, particularly the experienced surgeons, where you can work around some of those difficulties. Clearly, any previous infection in the joint can be a major problem. And then if there are general health disabilities, which make the anesthetic difficult, then that can add to the difficulty of actual surgery. The, the technique of surgery is fairly well defined. And different choices are made on what technique you use according to the knee that you're facing. So you might choose a straightforward knee replacement, uh, a very large complicated uh, implant in a situation where you need uh, stability. Um, you might choose a bespoke knee replacement, which is a very sophisticated way of doing a knee replacement. And you can use navigation or robotics in certain situations to try and get the best out of the knee. All these decisions uh, need to be made uh, in conjunction with the patient. And um, over time, the experienced knee surgeon gets an understanding of all those options um, and decide with the patient what's best to do. Uh, so a knee replacement can be a difficult or complicated case where there are background features for the patient that might compromise the outcome of the surgery. Uh, there can be general health issues um, where a patient isn't well and the anesthetic is challenging. Um, some of the management around the patient's health at the time of surgery can be difficult. Uh, there can be situations, for example, where people are on blood thinners um, and that causes extra bleeding, which can complicate the wound healing. And there are other situations where wound healing can be compromised, either because of background health problems or long-term conditions. Um, the, the classic one would be rheumatoid arthritis as compared to osteoarthritis. But there are many other situations where patients have a compromise of their immune system, which makes healing difficult. You've then got the um, situation with the soft tissues around the knee. If there's any uh, skin lesions or uh, problems with potential infection, that could compromise wound healing. And then if you've got tight soft tissues or the opposite, you can have loose soft tissues um, such as a, a hypermobile knee or one where there's been previous ligament damage. Those can, those can be areas that can complicate a knee and it may uh, mean that you have to adjust your choice of implant when you're, when you're doing that. Other difficulties, uh, difficulties would include um, where there has been previous surgery, uh, which may mean the scarring is a factor, or where there is metal implanted, for example. And the other thing is deformity. If the bone is deformed around the knee from a previous injury uh, or a congenital abnormality, 
then that can add to the difficulty. And, and the choice of implant you would use in that situation needs to be carefully judged. Recovery time after knee replacements certainly varies. So the simplest recovery would probably be where somebody has a partial knee replacement. And that's a situation where you just take one comp compartment, compartment of the knee and you replace that. So that might be the inside of the knee. It might be the kneecap joint, for example. And generally, because you've done less surgery to the joint, the recovery is quicker. So typically, patients would be in hospital for one day. They recover their movement fairly quickly and the pain levels and complication risks are lower. As you go up in scale to a total knee replacement or then quite a complex knee replacement, um, the effect on the joint and on the patient generally is greater. So the bigger the surgery, the more complex the recovery as it were. But that's not to say that there need be complications, it's just that you have to anticipate them and manage those. Uh, uh, for redo knee surgery, Clearly that is um, the biggest kind of surgery. That's where you're taking out an old knee replacement and putting in a new one. And that's arguably one of the biggest operations that you can have on your knee and still preserve the joint. Uh, patient factors can be important. So generally the slimmer and fitter you are, the easier it is to get a good result from the knee. Conversely, the less mobile or obese patients can struggle more to get the best out of a knee replacement. And the complication rate is slightly higher in terms of swelling, stiffness, infection, and discomfort. But it is still possible to get a good result. You just have to take a very careful approach. Um, in situations where patients have medical conditions, particularly, for example, with blood thinners, then the wound healing can be an issue. And the way I like to think about knee replacements is that it's essentially an operation on the soft tissues, but you also do the bones. So the bones, if you like, for me, are secondary to really good management of the soft tissues when you're doing surgery. And a careful assessment of the soft tissues, that's the blood flow, the alignment, uh, the stability of the joint, they all come from the soft tissues. Uh, and those are the things that you need to be very careful with. When you do knee replacement surgery, you take consent from the patient. And there is a, a, a need for informed consent. And what happens there is the doctor informs the patient what the risks are. So the first one usually that I would mention is infection. Uh, the standard rates of infection for a knee replacement are one in 200. So it's not particularly common. But if you are that one 200, then obviously that is a very important thing because um, you have to face probably further surgery to sort things out. It's not just a question of antibiotics and move on. It can be more complex than that. So infection is a key thing. And we use antibiotics both uh, injected into the veins at the time of surgery and in the cement that anchors the knee uh, in the bone. Bleeding can be a factor. Um, generally, uh, many surgeons would use a tourniquet to reduce bleeding at the time of surgery, but you can get a rebound bleeding once the tourniquet is released, and that can cause significant swelling. For patients who have a, a tendency to bleed, either naturally or because they've been on medication, then the bleeding potential is higher, and that can cause leakage from the wound and other problems. And leakage after surgery is a bad thing, so we, we really need to have the wound sealed to contain a clean environment for the need to heal. So that's a, a key consideration. Blood clots or thrombosis, uh, they're not uncommon at all. Uh, most surgeons will take measures to prevent that in the first place. And that's a mixture of uh, medication, exercises, uh, perhaps stockings on the legs. And also during surgery, we use pumps to try and promote uh, continued blood flow. And for the majority of patients, that will result in a good outcome without the risk of thrombosis or the bigger complication, which is called embolism, where a blood clot goes into the lung. 
Some patients are higher risk because they've already had thrombosis or a blood clot in the past, and they're the ones that we have to um, take care of particularly. Soft tissue problems include stiffness or instability of the knee. Many of those can be anticipated before surgery, and so you factor in what I call soft tissue elements of your surgery, and you choose particular implants or a particular technique to overcome that. Um, dislocation is very rare with knee replacements. It can happen with hip replacements, it's very rare. Um, so we don't tend to see that. There are, there are one or two areas where dislocation is a possibility, but it's a, a pretty rare thing. Uh, recurrent pain is the other area I warn patients about, and that can be due to generally soft tissue problems. So there are structures around the knee, like the blood vessels and the nerves, that are potentially at risk, and certain deformities of the knee could increase that risk. So if you have a, a knock knee deformity, then there's one particular nerve that could be at risk, for example, when you're correcting the deformity. The other soft tissues include the tendons and also the ligaments around the joint, and they can be a source of pain. Um, so knowing that, you take great care to protect those. Um, the other complications tend to be more general, so there would be anaesthetic complications. And again, they would increase for the less fit patient, the patients who've got more medication or medical problems. And you have to make a judgment. So working in uh, um, conjunction with my anaesthetic colleagues, I will try and evaluate what the level of risk is for an anaesthetic. Many patients nowadays have a spinal anaesthetic, which means they don't have a general anaesthetic and go to sleep. Uh, that's not that they're necessarily awake during the surgery because they can be sedated, but the value of a spinal is that it can reduce the pain um, in significantly after the operation. And during the surgery, you have a long enough period to do the operation without any problems. So that's a very common scenario. And many patients ask me about that now. There are one or two much rarer complications. Um, and having just come through the pandemic, we always warn people about the slight risk of, of COVID disease. Um, but fortunately in my practice, I've not seen that as a problem. 